What's up guys, welcome back to another video. So today we are talking about the top 10 best value for money motorbikes you can find on the market right now. I'm gonna show you some of the clips from what we've got at Ultimate Bikes. Uh, or when you're watching this, some of them might be sold. We get through stock really, really quickly. If you want to go head over to their website, go check them out. Um, and if you see anything you like, give them a call and you very much uh, might get a hold of me. So, uh, let's get the intro. Let's just get straight into this. Number one. The Yamaha Phaser S, or SA model. But we have a 2007, when I say we, Ultimate Bikes. We have a 2007 SA model with only 13,700 miles on it for £3,295. So, obviously, if you don't know anything about the phasers, they originated from a, the R6 engine, but detuned. They produced 98 brake horsepower at 12,000 RPM, which is quite a lot when you think about it. I've, I've always said about that 100 brake horsepower mark is perfect for the roads, absolutely spot on for anything you need for the roads. It also has 63 newton meters of torque, at 10,000 RPM, so it is up in there. So the revs, you've got to scream it to have a lot of fun on it, but it's it only weighs 187 kilograms, that's dry though. Um, so it's it's slightly on the heavy side, but you don't feel it, you really don't. The wide handlebars, uh, the low seat height of 795 millimeters is a perfect combination for commuting, and it's got enough power for the roads on a, on a weekend when you want to be overtaking cars and stuff. It's, it's, it is a perfect model, in, in, in my opinion. Great wind resistance, and I think they look quite good. They're angled, um, they're reliable, they're just great bikes. And for £3,295, for one that's literally done 13,000 miles, or for almost 14,000 miles, let's say, is is a lot of bike for that money, okay? It's, it, I think that's fantastic. Compared to like a 2007, 2008 R6, uh, you'd be pushing like four grand plus um, for the same mileage, so yeah. Massive value for money for one of those. Number two BMW F eight hundred S and ST, and a little bit of the GT on the side. We're gonna stick with the S, the S for now, because um, we have one at work, or it's just sold actually, a 2007 model for 2995 with about 25,000 miles on it, with a top box and a set of panniers, in the stunning red that it has. And if you've never seen this bike, honestly, in person, it looks fantastic in red. It's such a stunning bike, um, and I think it's r really underrated for the styling. I think it looks futuristic. I think it's actually a really beautiful and well-made bike. The front brakes on them are fantastic. The Brembo's uh, is a twin caliper, a 320mm um, disc up front, twin calipers, fantastic brakes. Um, the Brembo calipers are just fantastic on them. They are on the heavy side. They weigh, I think, 182 kilograms dry, which is still five kilograms lighter than the Phaser. I think it's got a slightly smaller wheelbase, so you feel the, the weight a little bit more, but it actually, when one that's actually put on the roads, it feels really planted on the corners. It's only when you stop that you really feel the, the, the bit more of a weight on it, and the, the seat height being slightly higher, uh, I think it's 820 mil on those, but it's a really it's, it's quite a thin seat, not majorly comfortable. The S model would be in the that's like sportier, you've got clip ons on, it's quite good, but it's really torquey for the motor. I think it's 80 newton meters. Well, I think I know it's 80 newton meters of torque on that one at 5800 rpm, and they produce about 85 horsepower, uh, about 8000 rpm. So it's really torquey, really low down power, slightly snatchy throttle, I'd say, um, on them, but because it's so it's geared low um, that's the reason being for, for that but it makes for a great commute bike um, it lacks a bit top end but when you want to twist take it on like tight twisties it's fantastic for say longer trips um, even though it can, you can get panniers and stuff for the longer trips uh, the ST and the GT are better uh, but the phaser would be a one step more I, I would say personally but for every year use the BMW is fantastic value for money at three grand beautiful bike and you get to say you own a Beamer so Number, 
number three. Now, this is a personal favourite of mine, and I didn't really like them until I got into the motorcycle trade. After that, these are one of my favourite bikes now, is the Triumph Sprint 1050 ST. Now, these bikes will, have, will always have slightly higher mileage. If you find a lower mileage one, it's going to be it's going to boost up the price. But most of them are around 20,000 miles plus because they are used. You know, they are a sports touring bike. We have one at the minute, 28,000 miles. Uh, for 2,800, okay, less, 200 quid less than three grand, okay, just think what you're getting for 2,800, okay, a Grom is more than that, okay, uh, buying a KTM Duke 125 is more than that, okay, 2,800 miles for a 1050 motor, the same motor that's in the, the speed triples and things, it's fantastic, okay, 123 horsepower at 9,280 RPM, 104 newton meters of torque at 5,000 RPM, the power comes in instantly, it's fantastic. 210 kilograms dry, uh, 805 millimeter seat height, and this is what gets me 160 mile an hour top speed, okay? I think the only problem we've ever had with one of them is the, the state of going on one of them, um, so they're really reliable. The styling, the three exhaust on the back is, is stunning, and I think a lot of people, because of the, the you know, it's just slightly heavy, 200 to, 210 kilograms dry, is quite heavy, but it's, it's so agile for what it is. The sound of it, oh my god, if you've never heard one, it's it's beautiful. But the power is honestly perfect for the roads. It is it is well made, and we actually had a guy come down that um, loved his road racing, and he was chucking it about like there was nobody business. He said he loved the rain, uh, and he bought one off of us, and he came down one day, and he was just showing, he's like, he can flick around. So it just shows, if you're a good rider, these bikes are fantastic. They are really, really, really good. <laughs> really good and the value for money for one of those I mean you guys it's just phenomenal really phenomenal number four the 2010 Suzuki GSX 1250 F or FA if you want to be specific. Uh, fuel injected, 96.5 horsepower at 7,500 RPM, 108 newton meters of torque at 3,000 RPM. That's how early this power comes in. It's a torquey, torquey motor, this one, but it needs it because the wet weight of this bike is 257 kilograms. So he's a heavy boy. Dry weight is 232 kilograms. However, it's got an 805 millimeter seat height, so it's quite a low seat height, so the weight is more manageable. Um, like the sprints, uh, they've got a slightly taller seat height with a quite a narrow seat. Um, the Bandit's are a bit, a bit user-friendly, and overall it's a fantastic commuter, um, but mainly, you know, a touring bike. Um, get a set of panniers, the top box for it. Um, the wind resistance is fantastic. That F model, as I said, huge fairing up front, gets rid of all that wind, uh, buffeting, and it's 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 a lovely bike for the longer trips. Uh, as a daily commuter, it's not too bad, but the weight does get on the heavy side uh, if you know stop start traffic. Uh, but you know, I move these bikes around daily, and um, it's not too bad once you're on it. When you're walking it about, you know, you do feel the weight, but once you're actually on it and moving, it's it's not too bad uh, of a ride. But yeah, super smooth motor. Um, it's quite good around the twisties. Um, if you can, you can, you feel like you're almost uh, using a bit of force to chuck it into the corners, I find. Um, but you know, there's so many variables. It could have been the tyres I had on at the time um, compared to the sprint anyway. Um, but on you know big swooping corners is why I say on the more touring side of stuff. It's really well planted and has that awesome amount of torque when you you know come out that corner, you put the power down and it just rockets off. Fantastic bikes, great tourers, and the value for money. The, at the moment, the market's all over the place with these, um, but you can find quite cheap ones. So uh, keep your eye out for the the good deals on these ones. Number five. One that has to be on the market, the MT-07. 
at number five. Four grand, four and a half grand roughly uh, for a used model. It, I don't need to say much about the M207. If you don't know the M207, you've been living under a rock. It's, it's a game changer really and always has been, always will be. <laughs> the bike weighs only 179 kilograms wet. Yes, wet, okay? It's incredibly light, 74.8 70, horsepower at 9,000 RPM, 68 newton meters of torque at 6,500 uh, RPM, uh, 805 uh, seat height. What can I say? It is built for perfection. It's master of torque. It's a beautiful bike. I think you already know it's got to be on the list. Number six. The TDM 900. For a higher mileage one, about 31,000 miles, you're looking at about 2795. But listen to the specs, okay? 86.2 horsepower at 7,500 RPM, 88.8 .8 newton meters of torque at 6,000 RPM. So it sounds a lot like the M207, um, but this is, you know, it's a much older model. 825 uh, millimeter seat height, so it's slightly high. The dry weight is 190 kilograms, so it is heavier. But it's, the Parallel Twin is another, it's another torque monster with wide handlebars, so it's 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 agile. It's got XR1 brakes on it, and the fairing actually does really well for wind resistance. So, in my opinion, 2795 is a perfect, um, fun little bike uh, for more more. I'd use it more for commuting more than anything. But for, for value of money, it's it's another one that's got to be on the list. It's fantastic. Number seven. A personal favourite of mine, the Yamaha Virago 535. Now these have come back in the market, really popular at the minute. We have a, a very, very nice one at the minute, a 1999 uh, model uh, with 18,000 miles on it for 2995. Low seat height, super easy to ride. In my opinion, they're super stylish as a commuter. Uh, commuter as a, uh, as they're super stylish as cruisers go. Um, it's got plenty of get up and go. Um, even though it's only 38.9 horsepower, they got 43 newton meters of torque, a 700 millimeter seat height, but it only weighs 182 kilograms dry. At wet, I think they're about 190 kilograms. Perfect, stylish cruiser, and the motor on them is bulletproof again. Um, service intervals are nice and easy and far between. So yeah, it's a lovely bike. You look after them, and they look fantastic. Value for money, three grand for a lush cruiser. Can't go wrong. Number 8 Triumph Speedmaster 865 I wasn't going to put this on the list and then I was and then I wasn't and then I was and I have for a reason so the reason I wasn't was MCN only rate this bike 3 stars however owners that rate it rate it 4.3 out of 5 and the reason being if you're actually living with it it's a very easy bike very stylish but as it goes, it's got plenty of horsepower, 62 horsepower, 60 newton meters of torque. It's 200, uh, 229 kilograms dry, so it is slightly heavier, but as cruisers go, it's not that bad. But for a 2005 model uh, with 20,000 miles on it, it's 2695. So I think as a starter cruiser, I think it really is quite good. And as I said, the owners love them, but compared to other bigger cruisers, I think it's not quite there. Um, but as a starter cruiser, I don't think you'd lose any money on it, so I think it's a good budget cruiser in my opinion. Number 9 One of my favourites, the Suzuki GSX-R 600 and 750. More to the 750 mark, because I think the 750s are where it's at on the road. Um, I actually had the 600, wish I had bought the 750. And funny enough, I actually bought mine from uh, Ultimate Bikes before I started working there. So, uh, and I'm all about the K1 and K2 models, okay? The 1000, they start to jump up in price, which is why I've said the 600 and 750. 
But I actually bought mine from Ultimate Bikes for 2,000, okay? Two grand, and it had 21,000 miles, I think, on it, in pretty good condition. I know it had been dropped on its left-hand side, I believe. For two grand, you can buy a second-hand 125 for the same money. They've gone up, yeah, they've actually gone up in price now. The same kind of condition, you look about two and a half now, so uh, they're quite a good investment. You can find a nice one, but quite, I think they'd be quite a good investment, but go for the 750, because I think the 600 market's going to start dying off slowly. But anyway, uh, 115 horsepower at 13,000 RPM, this is for the 600. 69 newton meters of torque at 10,800 RPM, it's got a higher seat height. I was on tippy toes when I had it, 830 millimeter seat height. Um, and it's quite a wide seat height, so you've got to really straddle your legs. It's got quite a big tank, so it's very roomy. It's 163 kilograms dry, so very, very light, very flickable. I mean, just ask Two Wheeled Life on Instagram, it'll tell you how flickable it is and uh, how easy, easy it is to wheelie as well. Massively reliable, easy to work on. There's an abundance of parts for them. They're just a fantastic overall sports bike, and um, it's really good. The 600 is a great kind of. Uh, starter bike, in my opinion, in sports bike, sports bikes terms, I think you can you can quite live with that 600 with 150 horsepower. It's, it's quite a nice bike, get you into the the market, um, and I don't think you'd lose a lot of money on one either. They're not the most comfortable being sports bikes, but they are quite roomy compared to something like the the ZX6, which I, in my opinion, I find much more an attack position and hurts my wrist straight away. The Gixxers, I can kind of live with a bit more. Um, so yeah, that's why it's on the list. Number 10. Number 10, the 2002 Yamaha R1. Okay, we've got one at the minute. It looks fantastic. Higher mileage, 38,000 miles, but three and a half grand. Okay, this is an absolute weapon. The Widowmaker. It's just 152 horsepower at 10,500 RPM, 104.9 newton meters of torque at 8,500 RPM, and it only weighs 192 kilograms wet with a top speed of 172 miles an hour. Okay, think about that. Think about that for a minute. In my opinion, it's more track based. It is a really harsh riding position and everything else. But as sports bike goes, as leader bikes go, three and a half grand for an R1. With that, that power figure is, I mean, that supercar performance for that price, okay? For a margin of the price of a sports car, okay? You'll leave pretty much everything in the dust for three and a half grand, okay? You can't go wrong. And I think they're one of the best looking bikes, even though 2002, mind, it's a almost a 20 year old bike at this point. I think it still looks fantastic. <laughs> my 10. Let me know if you've got any more. There's loads out there, but in my opinion, these are the top 10. I could have thrown some more in there, but off the top of my head, this list will probably change over time as 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 you know, as they do change as the market changes, but for now, I think these are a good 10 to keep you an eye on, um, keep your eye on the market and if you can find one, snap one up and especially the sprints. The sprints are fantastic. If you never have a chance to ride one, ride one. They are beautiful bikes. Guys, if you have enjoyed this video, please hit the thumbs up button. If you're not subscribed already, and uh, if you like this kind of content, let me know and I'll do some more. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.